done to the uh, calendar aspect of the clock so far uh, is to completely disassemble it. Uh, I've cleaned the, um, I've cleaned everything, um, but I've also had to put a little bit of work into uh, restoring the surface finish of all the cocks because it had been handled uh, quite badly at some stage and it had uh, got some really horrible uh, fingerprints on on a lot of the uh, components so I, uh, I had to sort of address those because they were etched into the surface. Um, I've also um, done a sort of bit of fault finding uh, to try and make the calendar more reliable. That's involved various little tweaks and bits and pieces. I've uh, I've not remade, but I've uh, I've certainly modified this steel piece here because the steps on it needed work to make it more reliable. So I actually cut a piece in and soldered the piece in and then recut the steps. Uh, I had to change the strength of the spring that that was um, acting against as well. I've uh, done a little bit of work securing, making this more rigid. Then we would come on to the sort of upgrade, if you like, which is uh, to make the system more uh, reliable when trying to change the, uh, the, the, the calendar manually. And the parts that I've put in is I've made this, uh, which is a stop block, and uh, uh, that acts against a pin, which is there, which means that you physically can't move uh, the calendar on any further than that stop block there. Milled the block out now, it's time to uh, fit it onto the plate. We're getting towards the point where we're going to want to drill the plate now, so we want to be sure that it's in the right place. somewhere now with the uh, Walter here. I've made various uh, little tweaks to the calendar. I've added a hard stop here and a corresponding pin. I've adjusted the shape of the tail here so that it uh, uh, is pulled into the stop position uh, more easily. I've uh, uh, changed the shape of this catcher slightly uh, so that it can miss an extra tooth that I've blocked off which is here and that's for a um, specific purpose to do with the um, preventing it from locking up. I'll cover all of this when I go over the calendar uh, at a later stage and explain it all but uh, it's actually all uh, working now how I want it to. The only uh, couple of things I've got left to do are uh, I need to replace this screw this is just a standard screw that I've put in for now I need to make a nicer version of that and um, I need to change the geometry of the 
lifting snail, the cam that's actually lifting this gravity arm. So I'll just zoom you in on that and explain that a little bit in a little bit more detail. Okay, so right in the back of the shot here, just where my little stick is pointing there, is the cam which lifts the gravity arm. And that cam at the moment is lifting the gravity arm up uh, so high that it gathers two teeth, which means it's uh, advancing the calendar by two days every time and we need to adjust it out so uh, I've set the stop screw here so, to where I need it to be uh, but the cam is actually uh, as far as I can see not adjustable so the uh, the cam I'm actually going to have to change the shape of the geometry and uh, increase the, the sort of flattened uh, dwell section bring it a little bit further round so that it doesn't lift it quite as far. And then I think we're approaching this system being buttoned up and nicely reliable. So I'll uh, in the next shot just uh, take the calendar plate off again so that I can gain access to take the cam off and change the shape of it. As I've explained it um, previously the uh, calendar plate here can come off completely independently of the rest of the movement which in my eyes is a brilliant uh, design feature and I think all complicated clocks should be built in this way and watches for that matter because uh, it's the same deal with watches often you've got a layer of complexity to remove just to make a simple adjustment so on this it really is as simple as just lifting it off like so and with the calendar plate removed you can see more clearly the cam that I was referring to. Uh, this cam lifts the calendar gravity arm. It's being get flirted around uh, once per hour. So it's taking all of that lift that the calendar requires, that all of that energy, it's spreading it over a 24-hour uh, period which is a uh, again, a, 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 a nice feature because it means that the clock isn't having to, to drag itself almost to a stop every 24 hours when it's lifting the calendar and doing all that work, it's spreading it out over a period. You can see I've put a little mark here, that's the point at which that we've got to the highest lift that the clock uh, can cope with. So I'm just going to scribe a, uh, a line uh, off the centre to continue that circle round so it'll effectively put a, a dwell it's already got a bit of a dwell here but it's it's at a higher lift so we need to take that extra bit of ramp out and uh, have the dwell carry on uh, further round so I'll do that next and then uh, refit it into the clock and hopefully then we're approaching completion on the calendar modifications see the mark that I've described there to explain it's basically just continuing the um, the diameter of this circle around so it creates a dwell so it's already got to its highest lift point here and then it just holds it on that lift point as it goes around the remaining here before it drops off terms of the uh, the locking up that it was able to do uh, I've managed to cure so what it was doing as I demonstrated in a previous video is when it was getting around towards the uh, the end of a month so this one is going to be a 30 
So that's 28, 29. Let's say, for example, that we're... OK, let's put it on 30. Let's just uh, say, for example, we're on full lift. So there we go. The next one is it wanting to drop off. If this hand gets knocked or moved, uh, before what was happening is it was able to get into a sort of a lock-up scenario. What I've done is to put a blank tooth in here, which means that in, in conjunction with the stop, which means that you can't physically move the hand on too far, if the hand gets advanced too far, it won't take that extra click. It just keeps returning back. So there's a safety mechanism, if you like, which is that it can't jump into that, uh, it can't catch into that last tooth. So whatever you do at the end of the month there, as soon as it drops off here, it will always sort itself out and return to, uh, to the start position. So zoomed in as much as I, no, I can with this lens on, you can see here the modifications that I've made. Uh, here's the stop block that goes underneath the wheel here and here's the pin that hits up against that stop block and limits the movement and you can just see down here here's the tooth that I blanked out and what I've had to do because that tooth still has to be used um, by this pawl earlier on is I've thinned this pawl down and moved its position slightly so that's acting on the back half of the ratchet and then this tooth is blocked off for half of it, there's still an active tooth behind that. So this pawl can still drop into that tooth, but this pawl, which would run on, which would interact with this, won't drop into it. So I'll just demonstrate that just by moving the hand around so you can see that pawl, that top catcher pawl, is coming, you see the tooth coming around there? That's about to drop behind that so you can see it still can drop in behind that little uh, blanking tooth but we need to be on lift just to demonstrate okay so you can see this paw here is going to interact with that now so if we come on round that little bit further Now it's kicked it out, but you can see that the little blocked out tooth isn't allowing this to drop back in again. So it's acting like a safety mechanism because if that was able to drop into that tooth, then it wouldn't have enough movement to be able to unhook itself again uh, without the whole system uh, jamming up, which is what was going on before. So those two little... Um, uh, little safety mechanisms, if you like, were my fix to make it a little bit more user-friendly. So I'm pretty happy with how that arrangement has, uh, how those modifications have come out. Okay, so the next part of this project will be to um, take the calendar module back off again, because this system is, as I demonstrated earlier, all um, modular, which is a lovely uh, design feature. And the rest of the clock while it's here with me I'm just going to, um, to run through some routine maintenance and clean it and re-oil it before it uh, it goes up on test. If you've enjoyed uh, getting sort of in, involved in this system here then uh, do please follow along on all my usual social media channels. Um, we've got Instagram at Tommy.Jobson and got YouTube obviously where, where this video is is up and there's also my website which is www.hpclocks.co.uk and I uh, regularly post details of uh, projects like this that I'm working on uh, as well as uh, as a, other interesting horological bits and pieces so do please be sure to like and subscribe and, uh, and follow along on, on the different channels. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.